in the first half. Monday in Brooklyn did Tyrese Maxey. Eight of ten tonight from the floor. Perfect from beyond the arc. He's got 18. We got 320 to go. Mitchell. Joel almost got a piece of it, but Donovan too quick. He's got 13 now. All he needed was that little half step that he was by Joel. That was the space and time he needed to get that shot to the glass. Layup ended a 9 6 a run. Avert right in Harris's grill. Kevin Love hit the deck, gets back up. And B fading. Short. The help about to come in the form of Karis Levert. He's ready to pounce. We saw Garland earlier in that position. Ready to stunt. Mitchell splitting the defense and Harden ahead of everybody. Harden, not about slamming it. Conserve your energy, man. You don't know if he's loose. Whatever the case is, two points is two points. Yeah, counts all the same. <laughs> Doesn't matter if the rim's shaking or not. Levert, what a great pickup he was for the Cavs last year, right? Sixers fans have, will have a hard time forgetting the success he's had against their team. Hard and too strong on the triple. Albeit in a Nets uniform, Karis Levert still has those capabilities. Yeah, he and Jared Allen, both a part of the four-team trade, right? That yep. it brought James to Brooklyn. Now Harden here in Philadelphia. Cool thing for the Cavs is he was a part of the Ricky Rubio trade because Ricky right. got hurt last December, tore the ACL. Maxi, three for three from downtown. He's Tyrese Maxi. open like he did last year. He's going to make you pay. Mitchell with the answer for Cleveland. Defenses may want to reassess how they play Tyrese Maxey, but again, if they do reassess and they make those adjustments, that leaves someone else on the floor open if Maxey garners extra attention. 21 first half points in county for the third-year player Tyrese Maxey. Great look to a wide open Joel Embiid. Still looking for his stroke. It is preseason opener for him. Right now, do whatever you feel like you have to do to get yourself engaged and just stay healthy, please. Yeah. Good ball movement this time by the Cavs. Great fake for Mitchell. Hands it off to Levert. Easy bucket there. Spread the floor really well with that passing. It's got 76 or defenders chasing the ball. And whenever you're behind, reacting as opposed to being aggressive, chances are they're going to get their way. Watch this again. You can see them passing it around, pass faking even Mitchell that time. The 76ers defense forced to have to run out at guys. All right, so a technical assess to the Cavs bench. Okay. That is one of the points of emphasis coming into this season. Bench decorum is the fancy term for it. It falls under respect for the game, along with freedom of movement, traveling. Yes, they are going to be paying attention to that, basketball fans, and, and non-basketball moves, which was a point of emphasis last year, cracking down on those. But but really want, because over the last couple of years, we've seen more and more guys all the way to the end of the bench, all the way to the coaches, just kind of standing at all times, making it, making it hard for the fans who pay a lot of money to, to see the game. Yeah, we love them, but let's call it the Kyle Lowry rule, right? Because he, yeah. he liked doing that a lot. And I think that when you mentioned the amount of money paid in those seats, uh, yeah, they're going to want to have some, something done yeah. about it. More than, more than I can afford. Our down to Embiid, three Cavaliers around him. Doesn't matter. James the aforementioned Kyle Lowry might have been in the um, video that the NBA handed out <laughs> he might have. to explain what this new rule meant. <laughs> or just new, newly emphasized it's, rule. It's never good when you're on the video. It's never good. <laughs> May have been standing right next to somebody who was about to attempt a three-pointer, screaming yeah, at them. But he wasn't the only one. It's we one shout him out because he's a silly be guy. mentioned in the conversation. But it's another thing to actually be the focus on the video. <laughs> and we can draw your attention to <laughs> yeah, exhibit it. There's really no denying after that. Foul on Danny Wellhouse Jr. And he's number two on house. He is a funny cat, I gotta tell you. We got we got off the uh, 
the bus because the team flew from Charleston to New York to get ready to play the Nets. And again, Cass is a Houston native, grew up in Texas. Uh, and it was pretty cold when we got off the bus. And he, he looked at me and he said, oh my goodness, I am never leaving my house for the rest of basketball season. He said, I'm going to be Jim House, Jim House, that's all. They don't have, a, they don't have that kind of weather to deal with in Houston. I told him we'd get him a big coat. He'd be good. He'd be a man of a town. Shimmy shake from James Thunk. He deserved a free throw. Doesn't get it, but the crowd appreciating the efforts from James Harden. Well, he had the bigger Dean Wade on him, and he figured he had the advantage. Here it is again. Got Wade in the blender here. Watching. Whoop. Shaking and stirred, it looked like, on that drive. Harden wanted the foul as well. Didn't get it, still talking things over. Who says preseason games don't count to the players? I mean, this one feels pretty good, right? It does. We know that we know that everybody's not giving their full effort. You can no. feel that if you're here in the Sure. Game. Well, and again, this is this is a long journey. So you want to pace yourself right now. And I'm reminded of what my former teammate Danny Ainge back in Portland used to tell me. Preseason games don't count. I think I may have had like 20 in one night, and he made sure to let me know that they do not keep track of those on your career okay. point totals. Wow. I'll, I'll look back. Count. Thanks, Dan. And I'll do it for our first half here in Philly. First to two. But